I'm Carol Grissom. I am a senior objects conservator at the Smithsonian's Museum Conservation Institute. Objects conservation involves treatment of objects that are not paintings, paper, textiles, or furniture. Therefore, it includes uh, all kinds of materials, uh, metal, stone, plaster, wood, all kinds of uh, vegetable materials, uh, grasses, um, gourds, um, you name it. Typically, uh, materials are mixed. Um, you can have, uh, say, an African sculpture that ha is made out of wood that has a textile covering, beads uh, sewn to the textile, and, and then copper on the face, for example. I learned about conservation when I was a senior in college and took a, a museum course that explored different aspects of working in a museum. I was an art historian monkey. Uh, I never could quite imagine myself as an art historian. And I always wanted to work with my hands. Uh, so when I learned about conservation, I knew that that was uh, a good profession for me. I have a long-standing interest in uh, zinc, which began uh, with the 4th Ohio Infantry Monument at Gettysburg National Military Park. Uh, I worked for many years on statues. More recently, I've started working on uh, zinc clocks, which were popular in the last quarter of the 19th century. At the Museum Conservation Institute, we have the luxury of uh, doing more research um, that can be both research on uh, conservation materials. We also have uh, time to do more long-term uh, projects. We worked for about 10 years on, the, on statues from uh, Jordan because they were thought to be too delicate to uh, excavate and in the field. Um, we excavated them here doing a sort of micro-excavation and then put all the pieces back together um, so that the statues could be exhibited. Uh, as part of that project, I got really interested in how the statues were originally made. And I decided it would be worthwhile to make a copy, uh, which is, is what this is. Um, one of the things that we uh, noticed about the statues uh, was that they're very wide and thin, which you can see if I turn this uh, sideways. Um, and when I uh, made a copy, I realized that the reason was that uh, if you try to make a statue standing up, it will just completely uh, fall down. But uh, if you do it in pieces uh, and on a flat surface, uh, with the statue lying down, you can um, successfully um, make the statue, but it ends up being rather flat and wide. Uh, the other thing we were interested in was whether or not uh, you could make the pieces separately. Uh, and in making a replica, we found that, that uh, you could do that. One of the things that we're really interested in was the fact that um, the statues have a, a an indentation where the hair would be, and we assumed that they probably wore wigs, which uh, either disintegrated or were taken off when the statues were buried. Um, and we wanted to see um, what they would look like if you dressed them. Um, we, we think that because the shapes are so broad and simple that, that they were probably also dressed. Uh, you, you can't really do that, or one shouldn't really do that to the original statues, so it was obvious uh, to do that on the replica. Um, at one point I had the statue wearing a bikini, and as you can see it has a wig and a hat. Um, many visitors to the lab noticed that when the statues uh, didn't have wigs, uh, that they looked uh, very odd. Um, some would say uh, extraterrestrial. You can see how odd the statue looks. Um, but if you put a wig uh, and a hat on the statue, uh, it actually looks rather sweet. Uh.